Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. I say these words every time I conduct the celebration of life, the memorial service or the funeral for someone. I don't know how many funerals I've preached through the years. And I hope you will indulge me again if I get a little personal today. These were the words that were proclaimed at my husband's service three years and just a few weeks ago. These are the words that will be proclaimed at my funeral. Say them with me. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. They're the words we say every time we share and celebrate communion together. When we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. You can sum the Christian faith up in that statement alone. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. My husband died after a long illness called multiple system atrophy, type C. It gave him eight years from the time of this diagnosis and he lived 10 and we were trying to be grateful for the extra time that we had together. And he died in October, one of the busiest months in the church year, which is of course when my house would sell and when I would move to a new house. And one of the first events that I returned to church for, the very first was a wedding. And it was a young man who had been a member of my church since he was in middle school. And I remember him sitting on the floor of my office when his first girlfriend broke his heart saying, I will never love again. To which I replied, I will dance at your wedding. I didn't dance, but I was there. And he came to me and he said, if it's too hard for you to do this service, we'll ask someone else. And I said, no, I would not do that to you. But when the words came from my mouth, until we are parted by death, I started to cry. So did the bride and groom. Later they said, thank you because it made us remember what we were promising today. Now, the second event that I attended was just a week later. It was the church bazaar, because I do like to be present at everything that goes on in the church, and now I can be because I live here. I'm so excited. <laughs> but a woman came up to me at the bazaar, who I'd met before. She was not a member of the congregation, but a friend of a member of the congregation. And she came up to me and she said, I hear your husband just died. I said, yes, he did. I expected her to say, I'm sorry, but she said, how selfish of you to want him back. I said, thank you, and walked away. She followed me saying, how selfish of you to want to take him from the arms of his Lord. How could you possibly want him back? I came this close to turning around saying, Lazarus was in his grave. Jesus knew that he was about to call him back to life, and yet he sat down and cried because that is who our God is, who understands our grief. St. Paul said, do not grieve. As those who have no hope, he never said do not grieve, and Jews grieve beautifully. They sit shiva, they cry, they understand that life here is but a moment. Martha, remember we preached about Martha and Mary just a couple months ago. Martha, who fussed at Mary for sitting at her, fussed at her sister for sitting at their Lord's feet, who said, tell her to get up and help me, Jesus. And he said, Martha, Martha, sh your sister has chosen the best thing. But it's Martha now who goes to Jesus. And often in my years in the ministry, I've wondered if Jesus cried because they just said, why weren't you here when we needed you? Something every pastor has heard through the years. But even in her grief, she says, if you had been here, Lord, he wouldn't have died, but I know that God will listen to you. And he says, your brother's going to live again. She said, I know, I know, I know the resurrection that time. He said, do you believe? And she said, I know you are the son of God, the one that is to come. That's why we're here. We're holding on to hope, even in the midst of a day like this, when we stop and remember. And as I said, those of us who have lost someone dear to us carry it with us every day. You have someone in your heart right now, I know. And if you're young enough, maybe it's a pet, but you have someone in your heart. 
And I read something once that I believe is true. You can't love a hamster in this life without risking your heart. And some of you have loved hamsters dearly. But we are here because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We are here because the promises of God are true and trustworthy. It is not a pie in the sky hope in something that is going to maybe happen for those silly enough to believe in it. It is the absolute reality in which I live and stand and practice my ministry. That Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Dying Christ destroyed our death. Rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. That's got to get an amen from you, if nothing else does today. Amen. When my husband was in Winchester Medical Center in the critical care unit, one of my best friends is a bishop in the United Methodist Church. I don't say that to impress you, because that doesn't impress many people. It shouldn't. But she called me every morning at 6 o'clock and listened to me sob hysterically, something I do in front of very few people in this world. And she said to me, without thinking, tell me who your pastor is. And I said, Jack Vineyard, who had never been my pastor, because the irony of the statement is that I was his pastor when he retired from ministry. She said, if you don't call him, I'm going to. And I called him up. And Jack, although he had trouble seeing, made his way to the hospital and sat, held my husband's hand, which was trembling, and made out the things that he wrote on a little whiteboard. And he sat with him and he proclaimed Christ's power over death. He didn't whitewash it. He didn't pretend that we were not at the end of Richard's life. But he helped him to let go and be with God. They got to know my husband was a Southern Baptist and a devout Christian. He said when he was diagnosed, I've had a very good life. If I get more of it, I will be grateful. If I get no more of it, I will not stop being grateful for what I've had. And I asked Jack if he would preach my husband's funeral. He hadn't preached in several years. He had trouble with his voice, trouble with his eyes. And he said, how could I say no to you, my love? And it was the last funeral he ever preached. And just four weeks ago, I preached his funeral. The only thing he asked was, let me choose the lesson. Let me take that off your shoulders. Let me choose the lesson. And this is the lesson he chose. And it's the lesson that I read at Jack's funeral. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives in me shall never die. Also part of our funeral liturgy. And the very place I stood to marry my husband, the very place I stood at Harmony United Methodist Church to celebrate communion was the place I stood next to his casket because that's how a good marriage ends. But Jesus, who sat with his friends and wept, has promised that when he comes again, he will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more crying. There will be no more mourning, because there will be no more death. There will be no more death, no more tears, no more grief. That's the promise that informs my ministry. That's the promise that gets me out of bed every morning. That's the promise that I will offer to Felda's family on Tuesday when we celebrate her life. Dying Christ destroyed our death. Rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. I pray for you that those in your heart that you're remembering today, that their faith 
will inform your own. That their example will be for you the light that leads you on. And that the knowledge of God's love for us in Jesus Christ, who knew our grief, who died our death, who was raised for our sake, will be with you. Say it with me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. Amen. Would you stand and join in singing?